number one reason why most men don't approach their crush is out of fear of not saying the right thing or running out of things to say. I want to show you just how easy it is to talk to girls and never run out of things to say using human psychology and these next six steps. But before I start, I want to let you know, you guys, you are smart. I love the fact I can sit here and talk to you every single day. Saw what I did there? That's psychological priming. You probably felt good. Which, by the way, I truly mean that. But the point is, I just primed the conversation by creating a positive environment and adding positive context. You want to know how powerful priming is? You can prime people to be rude or polite. They found it in this study where they took three groups of people. One group was deciphering words that were rude, like bold, aggressive, disturbed. The second group was neutral. They were deciphering words that really didn't mean anything. And the third group was deciphering words that were polite, like patient and respectful. Then the researchers had them all wait. Within 10 minutes, 60% of the group that was working in the rude vocabulary interrupted the researchers, whereas the other two groups were way more patient. Well, you're going to use priming with her and you're going to start it through text. I want you to frame yourself as the perfect match and don't do it in a needy way. Do it in a flirty way. Here's an example text. Have you ever just met somebody and almost immediately start to feel insanely comfortable like you've known this person forever? Because that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Boom. Send that text message. It's super light. But now you got her prime thinking, man, this guy the one. Then when you meet for the date, I want you to keep the same energy. Again, it's playful. It's flirty. You're not being serious. You could be in the middle of the day, be something like, so what are we naming our three kids? She's going to laugh. She might even open up a little bit, give you the actual name she wants. But now she's thinking, wait a minute, this guy's husband material. I'm not going to lie to you, boys. I use this exact same line on my wife. I'm two kids in. I'm just saying. Okay, so now you've primed her and you got her in the right mindset, but that's not enough to never run out of things to say. That's where tips two through five will get you. Two, I want you to use stories to respond to questions. The reason you run out of things to say is because every time she asks you a question, you immediately just say yes, no. Instead, I need you to harness people's imagination through the power of storytelling. Research suggests that stories are easier to understand and more engaging than just logical responses. Let's take a boring example. It could be the weather, the traffic, the party, whatever. Let's take the weather, right? Everybody says, wow, the weather's been really good today, right? It's the usual line everyone goes to because they have nothing to say. And then you'll respond with something like, yes, yes, it is. There you go. End of conversation. But I instead want you to respond with a story. So let's run it again. Let's say she says something like, the weather's been really nice lately. Yes, it has. And it's actually been allowing me to spend more time outside. I recently picked up long distance running, almost like marathon running. I'm running to parts of the city I've never even seen. I feel like I'm going on a mini vacation every time I step outside. Super relaxing. That simple, oh, the weather's great, went from boring weather to something you both have in common to a story about the weather to now asking her what she likes to do for fun. You can literally do this with anything. Three, ask why three times. The deeper you get into a conversation, the more connected she's going to feel to you. You also will never run out of things to say because now you have a mental goal to always ask why three times for any topic she brings up. Here's how you use it practically. Let's say you're in conversation with her and she says something basic like, I've been loving reading these books recently. I feel like it's my escape. Your first why can be, why do you feel like you need an escape? She'll probably say something like, because my job's so stressful. Your second why is, why is your job so stressful? She'll probably then go deeper and say, my boss always nags me. I don't do anything right. I just wish I was my own boss. Your third why can then be, well, why aren't you your own boss? Why don't you try starting your something yourself? This is essentially called conversational branching, where you'll get a topic of conversation and then branch out and out and out. The more whys you ask, getting deeper and deeper into different topics of conversation, getting to know her more. And each one of those are conversations where you can also branch out of, essentially never running out of things to talk about. Four, use objects around you to make your conversation better. This is called multimodal communication. You have to recognize that communication extends beyond just the words you say, such as visuals, your gestures, props, things you wear. So how do you use it? I want you to narrow it down to three things. Body language. You're going to use this to bring your message to life, make it more entertaining. Social status cues. This is like your watch, your clothes, your glasses. These increase your social appeal and increase your social status. And three, space. You're going to use space to increase attraction the closer you get. Let me give you a visual example of this. Imagine a guy that has constrictive body language. He's, he's nervous, so he's all tight. He's wearing a hoodie, right? And he's about 10 feet away from that girl. Now imagine a second guy. Guy has open body language. He's making the message better. He has a nice white button down, a watch on his wrist. He also is about three to five feet away from her. Which one's a more compelling conversation? Five, I want you to laugh to emotionally manipulate her into thinking she's having a great time. This is called emotional contagion. Emotions can be contagious and others are more likely to resonate with your message if they are in a positive mindset. In other words, when you approach with a smile, she's more likely to smile back. We as humans will mimic facial expressions of emotions we see. Usually this copying or mimicry 
happens within milliseconds and it's subconscious. You don't even realize you're doing it. Okay, so how do you apply it? How do you use it? Whenever you approach, make sure you come with a smile and open body language. Through emotional contagion, she will also smile and open up her body language, which will put her in a positive mood. She will then be tricked into thinking she's having a great time with you. Then, as you deploy any of the conversational tricks I've already taught you, you got it. Okay, so now you know how to keep a conversation going, but your ultimate goal is make her want to come back and continue to talk to you. You want her to want more, to send you that first text message, to call you first. And to do that, this last one's important. Number six, do not give up everything. When she asks you a question, try to avoid being an open book. For example, let's say she asks you something like, what are your favorite hobbies? A traditional response would be something like, well, I spend all my time either in the gym, jujitsu, or playing video games. Congratulations. You have now told her everything and have run out of things to say. This is what happens every single time. And now she has no curiosity to continue digging further. The conversation's dead. So let's try this again. Let's say she asks you, what are your hobbies? Your response could be something like, well, one of my hobbies is jujitsu. I started this journey about a year ago. It's been the best year of my life. The amount of mental clarity and humility that you experience being around other men that could quite literally beat you up, but also have respect for it and it's an art form, has been one of my favorite hobbies for me recently. Now she's thinking, wait a minute, this guy has more hobbies. Also, why was that so profound? What else does he know? She will likely keep digging because curiosity is one of the strongest driving factors to keep interest high. But I tell you, I never deceive you. And if you guys want to continue to level up, I got two more videos here that you can watch. See you boys next time.